Oh, we're going to see on the table I fix stuff. So we're back on this uh, merchant again, um, working on the last video. So um, after I finished the last video, uh, a little bit of work here, I see over here, I kind of like sorted out the screws into um, what I think went where. Um, I also noticed that this piece here was out of time. So I took the side back off and retimed um, everything again, and I also put um, that brass washer, uh, put one of those brass spacers in here, so now this is much tighter than it was last time, so I think we should be good there. So the next step is this piece. So I'll make sure that we've got this part here facing straight up, and this is the handles of the home position, that's where we want it. So. Should just slide in. We got it to. So I think we're off by one, two, three. That should be that. And then this side, I've already put oil in here and oil um, in that side. So this side then should just go on. Maybe I have noticed that this piece was bent a little bit. I tried bending it back, but I need to bend it back a little bit more here. Yeah, this piece. The, I'll have to see how this is going to go. Maybe. See if that'll fit now. Uh, we'll probably have to fit this better later once we get everything in place, but. It's not going to go on that way. I'm going to have to... Oh, maybe it will. Oh. Maybe. Yeah, that's in. That's in. There we go. That's loose. It's actually not bad. It's not much play on that at all. So I don't have two washers in there. So when we tighten... Tighten this down, we'll have to see if that's going to be uh, too tight or not, but there we go. So that's in. So I'm going to go through and oil all of these. They seem a little bit sticky, the moving segments seem a little bit sticky. So I'll go through and oil all of those. That one seems pretty good. Um, I've also attached to this piece to the bottom of the carriage. Now, if you remember, this piece had a broken spring. There was half of it. So this is what I have in there for now. Um, this is not the right size spring, obviously. And I just uh, kind of like coiled the, like tightened, kind of like wrapped the end a little bit tighter um, to make it fit in the little hole there. It does work. You see it springs back. We focus there, you can see it. It does spring the piece back, so it will work. Um, and it shouldn't hit anything, even though it's a little bit bigger. Um, something else I wanted to mention, I was wrong about where these pieces went. I had them down here like this to hold up this assembly, but they actually go right here. And then this assembly will mount like that. Um, and be spring loaded kind of like this one mount, mount. Felt like that maybe. Well, I'll have to see how it goes on, but that's where those pieces go. And you can tell because, see, they've got two um, locating dowel pins and two screw holes. And you can see the bottom here. You can even see like the outline of the piece a little bit and then the two locating dowel pins and the two screw holes. So like, they obviously go right there like that. Unless they already installed the other one. So um, I should be able to hopefully slide, put the, that piece on here and slide it underneath the carriage, under, uh, carriage underneath this drum, with this drum installed. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, also now I can install this uh, transmission piece, I think, the shift lever. 
So this piece would normally be spring loaded up like this and rest against the bottom of the cover. And when that's like that, this is, this is pretty free, so it should be fine. I can reinstall the detent spring into that. Um, and we're getting close now. So this piece here is what pushes against this spring lever here for the carriage release. Um, and then we've got this piece, which I, in a previous video, I mentioned that this had to go on first, but actually it doesn't. You can still slide it in one of these holes here. And find out where it is. Right like that. That should be fine. We'll get that installed. Um, I might do that. I should probably do that before I put this in because it's going to ride. You can see the the wheel mark there where it rides. So this should go with something something like that, and then there's our cam in here that this uh, fork rides on. Actually looks like this side rides on it. So maybe like that. There, that looks right. So then this piece here, right on like that, and then I go right on the camera, and then these two sides will be held up by the two pieces on the carriage. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna clean clean this up, probably take this shaft out to clean up all the surfaces in here since these rotate on that shaft, and install this onto the carriage, and then hopefully install it into the machine. And then this piece screws down in the back there to spring tension all these forward. So that'll be the last thing I do after I install the carriage. So let's do that. All right, so I've got these installed here. You can see the bracket there. Um, I just assume that the spacer goes on this side. When we actually put it in, we can test that and make sure. Hopefully it'll just slide in like that. But before I put it in, uh, I want to clean the, this off first. Now, people ask me what I use for cleaning. Uh, old grease and stuff off this stuff and I just use a uh, lacquer thinner and it's really good at dissolving the grease so you can see how dirty this is let's take some of this you can see all the grease that comes off it's off pretty easy So we're gonna get that cleaned out before we put the carriage on so it'll slide nice and free. I also took the gear off of there so I can clean under that too. It looks pretty gone there. So it pretty much shines it right up. Um, some of this looks like the metal itself is actually dark, not that there's not that all of that is grease, but Pretty much just, you know, wipes it right off, really. See how that's shining up there? It looks like some, there's still some on the back piece there.
a little bit down in there yet, but that just might be darkening of the mineral itself. Yep, and see how it shined up the that whole this whole piece was all really dark and it shined it right up. So um, should be good for that. Should we get the edges here? I think. Be sufficient for the carriage there. Yeah, that's just darkening of the middle there. So um, that should be fine. I've got this piece just sitting in there for now. Um, clean up the gear itself, and you can see this is that gear. So it's a two level gear. Um, one of them is driven and in engages with the gear, uh, the rail gear on the back of the carriage. And I mentioned this before, the other one engages with um, the piece which I seem to have. This place here. It's probably under the paper towel or something, but on the other piece that goes in there and moves the counter slider. Let's see why I put that then. But anyway, oh here it is. Right behind the back. So then like the front side would be the carriage and the back side would be this. These are the top ones. So uh, clean this up too. Should be a brass gear, it looks like. Looks like it is. Probably really uh, soak this a little bit in lack of thinner, but I think this will be fine like this. Let's get most of it cleaned off here and we'll. Put some oil on it. Make sure there's no paper towel fuzzers. So that should be good. There's still a little bit there yet, but I think that'll be fine. It's uh, pretty clean again. Let's put some oil on here. Bearing service on the bottom and on the shaft as well. I should just drop on. This thing is nice and free. And the washer here too. I'll put that on and I have a little screw that goes in there. Too hard. There's supposed to be a spacer or something in there. It seems free now, but tighten it down all the way. Hmm. Yeah, it'll be okay. Yeah, seems fine. Not sure why it joined the first time. Anyway, that's, that should be good. So now let's see. And install this whole thing here. So this piece goes on the outside. These pieces go. This has to go over one. Well, maybe this is going to be difficult. Actually, may not. May not work as well as I was hoping because. Yeah. Be, okay. I'm going to have to figure out how to put this in now because. So this has to angle down underneath this side, but this has to line up like this. And you can see it's not going to line up so easy there. So I have to take this side back off and take this drum out to put this back in. Um, it's going to be kind of annoying to do it that way, but let's see now this is down too far. It needs to be. Yeah, this is needs to be up here. I was stuck behind the bell clapper, so yeah, I'll have to figure out how I want to put that in. It's not going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be.
All right, so I got the carriage back in. Um, wasn't a graceful operation, but what I did was I took the screws back out of this side and it kind of like wriggled it out a little bit and then it kind of like finagled this in. It wasn't um, very easy to do. Um, but it's in now. Um, I'm kind of thinking the way that the motion expects this machine to be assembled is to assemble all the pieces separately and then set the whole thing on the base uh, because these sides have dowel pins that go into the base so in order to take this off you have to lift it up and then out um, which is kind of a tight fit um, with this in here because you know this is a, a good fit in the bearing on the side there so it doesn't want to lift up easily um, to slide out so probably they want you to put this all together first and then set it on the base but this is the way I did it and it, so far it's worked um, just not super convenient and doing it the, that way either like putting it together and putting it on the base wouldn't be super convenient either because you know there's nothing that attaches this the only thing that attaches this to these two pieces is the base and the um, carriage slide here so um, like once you put this on you'd have to put the carriage on or put the base on to keep this from just falling off um, so not super convenient, but we've got this in, and the machine's really starting to get heavy now. I got the spring uh, plate screwed in the back, so you can see these are detented now, as they should be. This one's come past the end of its detent, there we go. So that looks good. Um, yes, there is some paint missing off of these. I'm just going to leave it that way, it's just part of, you know, part of the patina, I guess, of the machine. Um, and it should be fine, you know, you can easily read the numbers and these are aluminum so they're not going to get rusty or anything, so it'll be fine, I'm just going to leave it that way. Uh, so I did get this piece in, um, this was also not super easy, and actually I forgot to put some oil on this track back here for it, Try to get that oiled up. Slides nice and easy. Put some oil on here too. So that we'll have to time with the carriage. Um, I'm gonna put the carriage on, which will probably be the next piece. Um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to tighten these screws in the back because these plates are always in the way. So that wasn't particularly convenient uh, operation either. Uh, something to note, this screw back here in this corner, uh, there's, two, there's a screw in the front and a screw in the back. Um, this is a shorter one because of this thing. If you put the long one in, it'll hit against this. And you can see this is spring-loaded like it should be. So that's that uh, spring we put in. Seems to be working. And you can see when I push that, these things go down and that releases the carriage. So these are like the ratchets on the bottom of the carriage. Um, you can see this comes up to push the carriage one way, and that pushes it the other way. Uh, so that seems to be working. So, I'll show you the back side. Machine's really starting to get getting some weight now with all the parts going on. And you can see this plate here um, has the springs for these. And then there's one spring that goes from this piece, which has the cam on it. Um, over to this pin here. And the cam, the cam follower, goes on the front side of the drum. Um, I think they changed this design somewhat in the later models because I think the last calculator that I worked on, the last margin calculator that I worked on, this was not mounted to the carriage plate, it was mounted to the bottom, I think. Um, but I think there was an XLA, so it may have been, that may have been why. Um, anyway, that's back in now. Um, so far, looking good. The bell won't work in the home position because the because this piece here hits against the carry tab, so it'll only ring when the carriage is not in the home position. Or not the carriage, the moving segment drum. As you can see, this is it has got a little bit of play, but it should be fine. Um, so yeah, I think the next step is going to be taking a look at the carriage, just cleaning up a little bit and putting some oil on it and then we need to time the carriage with this piece 
so that the counter finger lines up correctly with the uh, drag gear in there. So while I have the carriage off, you kind of see the uh, moving segment action. So as I rotate this around, see how these pop out? And now these ones are going to start falling in because they've added what they're supposed to add, but this one's set to like eight or nine, so that one's still out. And then it falls in all the way down at the bottom after it's driven, you know, the full length of that moving segment. So like these ones pop out up here, then most of this rotation is missed. And then down here is where they would start driving. So they're only going to drive, you know, like two or three teeth. Then they fall back in. Well, this one is driving its whole, um, whole distance. Make sure I have this locked in there. Okay. So that's just uh, basically how those work. And like I said, if you want to see what that mechanism looks like in here, you can watch the Merchant XLA series where I took this whole thing apart um, because that one had little plastic uh, tabs on the top of each of these and two of them had broken off. So I had to make little uh, metal extensions on the end of these pieces and then reform the plastic, I made a line out of putty. Um, we formed those tabs to go on the end of these things. Um, so that's why I took that whole thing apart to get to these pieces so I could work with them. Uh, but you can check out that video if you want to see how this is all put together. So anyway, um, on to the carriage. Alright, so I've got the uh, carriage reinstalled. Um, I'm not going to slide it now because this piece here is spring loaded down against the carriage. Um, I don't want it to you know, scrape the paint or anything so um, but I've got it um, this is all the way in the um, like the lowest order position so I'll be adding like the lowest order of the um, accumulator here and you can see the pointer there is pointing at the lowest digit um, in the counter you can see if we turn the crank it adds right in fine in comes the counter we have clearing we have clearing. So the next thing that I'm going to do is um, I have to adjust the valving a little bit um, since that was bent. Um, when I bent it back so it would fit, um, now it's not ringing the bell on overflow. So I have to bend that a little bit to make it actually ring the bell on overflow. And I think then we should be good to put um, the covers back on, at least this top cover. And then we can slide the carriage because the top cover will hold this piece up out of the way. Um, there is one screw seems to be missing for this piece. You know, I've got one in, got one in here, but we were missing one for here. Um, now there are two dowel pins that hold this in, so I don't think it's going anywhere. But um, I'm going to do a thorough search of the box and this work area. See if I can find that extra screw. Um, other than that, I think I need to find one screw for here yet too, um, which I think I had before, so I'm going to look around and see if I can find where I put that, but, um, I think someone's worked on this carriage before because not all these screws here are the same size, but they all fit. So like, um, this one over here was smaller than all the other ones, um, but it's a good fit in this hole. But like all the other, these, this one and this one are too big to fit in this hole. Um, but they fit fine in these holes. And then this hole here was even bigger. The, this one and this one were loose in that hole. So I think I, ha I think I found one that would fit in there. I have to see where I put it. Um, so definitely someone's been working on this before and did mess that up somehow. Um, probably should just redrill all four of these holes and tap them out to the same size. But for now, we'll go with this. Um, it's, it's on there solid. It's not going anywhere. So I'm not worried about it. So yeah, uh, definitely coming together uh, pretty good so far. So let me fix that bell mechanism and then we'll put the cover on and we can play around with this a little bit. All right, so the cover's back installed. I also installed the clearing handle. So the idea of this is, you know, when you have some random number set, so right now we've got that number set and you want to clear it, all you do is just, and it resets them all to zero. Um, that's pretty basic. Got our shift lever here. That's uh, whether you want to count for um, resistance or attraction. So it's in this mode, it's in the forward gear, and the counter counts up when you're adding. In this mode, it's the reverse gear, and the counter counts up when you're subtracting. 
So like if we put in say one, two, three. So now it's in forward, so it counts up. If I switch it to reverse, let's do four, five, six. So then it counts down. Now I went back to zero and I added seven, eight, nine. Can do nine, eight, seven. Four, three, two. And I'm like, it looks like my um, might be rubbing a little, little bit on the case though. The uh, um, the metal piece, the numbers on it, might be rubbing on the inside of the case. So I have to take a look at that. Three, two, one, and three, two, three, zero. That is correct. Uh, we should be able to push this knob on the side and then slide the register. That slides nice and good. And you can see as I slide it, watch this here. You can see the pointer moves back and forth. So like if I lock it here, now it's going to count in that position, like so. So yeah, obviously I'm gonna have to take the cover back off um, once to see if I can prevent that from rubbing on the case. It looks like the, uh, you can see how it, and it pokes into the crack a little bit. Looks like the uh, metal piece with the numbers on it got, must have got bent a little bit at one point, you know, either in shipping or, you know, when it was sitting on my desk or something. So, um, have to see if we can fix that. These other ones, it's nice and smooth, nice and smooth. That one's got a bit of a rub right out there. I'll have to take a look at that. And smooth, smooth, smooth. And we just got a little bit right there at the top. I have to see if I can just do that a little bit. No, that didn't help. Push it down just a little bit. A little bit better. So my finger won't fit in that hole. That actually feels pretty good. But as far as I'm gonna, uh, it's a little bit sticky there. Just the end, I think, now is sticking up. Which one? This one? This one. This one you gotta take a look at. That one's definitely not right somewhere. Let's see if we can find out where that's rubbing. So yeah, this has to come back off. Um, not a big deal. I just have to take this piece off again. Um, and then take the screws out. So we are missing some of the screws. You can see I got one here and one here, and this one's stripped out so it doesn't tighten, which is not un really uncommon. Um, I've got one in the back, so we're missing one for the back, and then I've only got two more to go in this front piece. So we're missing a total of three screws for um, the outside cover, which is not uncommon for these machines. Um, they're really tiny screws. You know, relative to the rest of the machine, these real focus, these real tiny things. So, um, you know, it's not uncommon to see one of these machines with you know, only two screws in each cover holding it on. Uh, I think I've seen sometimes there you are know, just one or no screws in the cover, especially this top cover because this will stay on without any screws in it unless you like try to lift up the machine by it, which is I wouldn't recommend even if there is screws in it. Um, this cover needs to have screws to hold it on, but this one you can just set on and it'll pretty much stay on. So, um, something else, we're missing two spacers for the decimal points on the accumulator. I could show that. So you can see how there's a screw here and a screw here, and then these pieces are supposed to slide back and forth on this rail. But in order for that to happen, the rail has to be spaced up. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this or not, if I don't you know, so You can see at the end there how it's right down against, but if you look at, say, that one, see how there's a spacer there? And then that gives ample room for the pointers to slide. So those are missing on the accumulator on both sides. So it's tied down on both sides. So I won't be able to use the decimal points 
on the accumulator because they'll scratch the paint if you try and slide them like that. So uh, I don't have anything that'll work in there, I don't think. So that's something that I'll have to be on the lookout for, just two little spaces. I could, maybe I could find some, uh, just a stack of real small wall shoes, but it's uh, pretty small stuff, so I'll have to see. Anyway, let me see if I can fix the rubbing on whatever column it was, this one, on this column. And then I think we should be just about done. Um, this piece has to go on, but the, the cover has to go on first. So this just goes on there like that. And then let's do one step. That's, that feels pretty nice and smooth. So that, the cover has to go on there first. So yeah, um, pretty satisfied so far. All right, let's do it back together now. Um, I went through the box, and the only thing I found was, I found one more case screw. Um, I found another one of these brass washers, and I found the middle piece of the broken spring. So I suppose it's actually bigger than I thought it was. Um, where this went, I'm not sure. Uh, when I put this together, um, you know, all the tolerances on all the drums in the shaft seemed pretty good to me. You know, maybe you might be able to fit this um, behind the gear on the counter driver shaft, but um, there's really not that much play there, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, you know, maybe if I ever have a reason in the future to take this apart, I'll see if I can find a place for that, but you know, everything fits pretty well the way that it is, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, the case screw that I found was different than all the other ones, so I just stuck it in the back so it wouldn't stand out. Um, so now I've got three screws in the top case and three screws in the bottom case. So you see what I'm missing? One down there. Um, I couldn't find the other screw for the plate that holds this assembly in. Um, and I don't have the lock washer for it either, so I'm just going to assume that I was missing when the machine was taken apart. Um, I'm not too worried about that because it does have one screw in it and the dowel pin is located, so it shouldn't be uh, going anywhere. So. Uh, I think we should be good. So we can try some numbers. So we can try subtracting, maybe say we'll subtract seven, that's eight, that's six, seven. Looks good. Cleared. Uh, we can try doing multiplication, so do 625 times 625, do 625, and then we're out in this position, so we're going to enter this six times. Three hundred sixty-five. That is correct. We can try division. So we'll push this in. We'll over. Make sure it locks in. Make sure that's tight. And do favorite three three fifty-five. Divided by one, one, three. Now this counter, because it has a tens carry, um, we should be able to do the kind of like the shortcut uh, division. So let's see if that'll work. And actually I've already messed up because I forgot to change the counter direction. So let me start that over. So again, three, three, five, one, three. We'll change this to divide. Bell rings. So now, theoretically, because this has 10 carry, you should be able to shift over and then add. That's going to be more work, but you can see we're getting there. And then you just alternate. So now we're going to subtract. Now 
we're going to add. Oops, too far. Want an extra tone, that's why I had to go back on that one. And subtract. Then too far. One thing I, I'm not a fan of on these machines um, is there's no stop like when you overflow. Um, but I guess a lot of the hand cutting machines didn't have that. Um, like on the electric Monroe's, when if you held down the button and it hit an overflow, it would physically stop the machine. There's, there's a, um, a catch that stops the machine. Um, it's kind of nice to have find that on here because when you're you're going, um, you, you for me anyway, I usually end up starting the next revolution before I notice that the bell's wrong. And then I have to finish that revolution and then come back one. Um, because of that ratchet in there, you can't go back in the middle of a, a revolution. So uh, I think we want to subtract this time. I might have messed that up. But anyway, you get the idea. 3.141. Um, I'm going to try doing it the other way, which would actually be probably less work. But you get the idea that I just alternate as you go along. So if we can... So the normal way would be... 3 and then we subtract and then we add one back and then shift over oops, I have to be home first oops. Oops, going on way. so in the normal way you just subtract until you get the, hear the bell ring, which means you got an underflow, and then you just add one back and then shift, and then every time you're subtracting, got the underflow, add one back, shift over, so you have, you have to be cranking pretty fast, I slowed down that time, that's why the bell didn't ring, you have to be cranking pretty fast to um, get the bell to ring because you have to throw the ringer into the bell basically. That's why the bell doesn't ring every time because it's not cranking fast enough. It won't have enough momentum to actually hit the ringer. And there we go. 3.1415929 So there we go. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is looking pretty good. Everything seems to function as intended. Um, so I'm going to call this a success. Uh, seems to work fine. Um, the paint is pretty sad on the case. It's not terrible. Um, you can see it's one there, it's one there, it's one off there. Bought one off here. Um, up here on the top, there's a, a patch here. I tried cleaning this. Um, didn't seem to make any difference whatsoever. So, um, not sure if that's like rubbed down to the primer or what exactly the deal is there. Um, you notice that the machine moves quite a bit when you're using it. Um, that's because the feet are gone. Uh, so, each of these round uh, pieces here is supposed to have a big round piece of rubber in there. Um, and uh, because of the the way that they have this, where the screws that hold the sides on are underneath those, um, you know, by now that they are just you know completely flattened. Uh, you got the guy that took the support has just chipped that out, chipped those feet out to get the screws out. So that's why we have no feet, and that's why kind of our slides on a little bit. But um, yeah, pretty satisfied with this. So let's just do a quick uh, comparison between some other machines of this type. Well, you can see three of the main styles um, uh, that Martian offered. Um, so this is the XLA. This is kind of like a cheaper version. 
Uh, you can see it doesn't have the counter up here. It has it down here like the normal um, pinwheel calculators had. Um, this uses the same moving segment mechanism in the drum. And this is the one where I took the drum apart because I remade two of these uh, tabbies on top here. Uh, so ironically, this being a cubicle machine, um, it actually doesn't have the problem that the XLs have with that drum because it doesn't have that drum. Uh, this does not have tens carry on the counter register. It's just, um, you can see if I, so forward is black, backwards is red. So each digit will just roll over. Um, you can't change the direction or anything. It's just if you go backwards, it counts up in red, and then when it gets to nine, then it goes to a black, and then it counts down to zero again. So that's all the all you get there. Um, then we have the XL, uh, which is like the fancier machine. I'm not sure whether they release both of these at the same time or release this later as a cheaper option. Um, but this is the more expensive um, fancier machine with the tens carry on the Kano uh, register and the transmission for you to choose which direction you want to count in. And then the third main style is the keyboarded machines, um, which basically, this right here is basically an XL mechanism, um, but then instead of having the uh, levers to set, they replace that with an arms on the back, which are connected down to the keyboard mechanism. So this drum in here will be pretty much the same. Um, just that instead of having tabs bolted on the top here, they have the tabs uh, back somewhat further and then there's a lever that runs under these keys. And when you push the key down, it basically pulls a lever down the back, it's the same as like pulling the lever here would do. Um, so this is actually an electric machine. This is the EEG-9, which is basically the most advanced uh, mechanism um, that merchant this is the last step of the XL mechanism um, before they change to the uh, super speed or the silent speed ones. Um, and so this, uh, this is fully automatic. So uh, we can shift all the way out. I've demonstrated this before, but I really like this machine. So we got that a lot faster than we were able to do on this one. Um, and actually you can kind of see, see how this one still has the rubber feet on the front. Um, the back ones are squashed because that's where the motor sits and it's a, it's a big fat motor back there. So that motor squashed the um, back feet, but the front ones are still in pretty good shape. Um, you can see the good, maybe what, quarter inch there. Um, and they still have like the um, the rubber pad on the bottom. I'm not going to lift it up because I don't want to tip it off the back of the table, but there is one other style. So you can see this is all the different styles that they made. And basically you've got, you know, your keyboard machines. Um, so there's the EEG there. Um, they claim to have made a 10 digit one, um, but I've never actually seen like any examples of that. This is the nine digit one that I have here, um, the EG9. So the, the last digit is the number of keyboard columns. So this one has nine. Um, they made the only um, advancement past this was these ones, which are a double level accumulator. Um, but other than that, it's the, the same. Um, same automatic features, everything like that, just it has a double level accumulator. Uh, so basically the three styles are the keyboarded machines, uh, which are which I have this one, I have this one, and I have this one. Uh, still looking for that one. Because um, these, they're, anyway, we're getting off topic here. Um, then you've got the XL, which is not on here, the XLA, which is here, and then the fourth style is this one, the XLB, which 
I've never actually been able to find any pictures or anything about this one. So whether they actually made them or not, I don't know. Um, I don't know how many they made. And you can see this is pretty similar to the XLA, except that it has a much smaller base. And instead of the ratchet shifter here, where you can just go like that, it looks like the only option they have here is some kind of like release where you can just release and then drag it. So this is, I'm assuming this was an even lower end model than the XLA. Um, so we're still looking for that too. I would like to get one of those and just you know, kind of see what it's about because you know, nobody seems to have any uh, pictures of it or anything. So anyway, um, that's your, basically you got that working. Uh, there's a little comparison here between the different styles of marching machines. And that's going to go for this one. Um, pretty satisfied with how that turned out. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.